Hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, and thank you for being with us um, on this beautiful Wednesday. I am in Hi, sunny. Everybody. It is sorry. Wednesday. And I am in sunny Arizona. I am vacationing and um, enjoying this beautiful weather and so ready to uh, share with you guys uh, a lot about being uncomfortable and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I want to welcome Dr. Linda Marquez on this beautiful and sunny Wednesday. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Happy, happy Wednesday, everyone. I'm always, I always look forward to um, to Wednesdays, midday, but not only that, you and I get the opportunity to connect, catch up, and to share information with people that I think can change their lives. So that's always exciting. So it's always exciting. Uh, it's it's good. There are no complaints. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So uh, the topic of comfortable with being uncomfortable, I think it will be, everybody can relate to being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We've always, um, all of us have experienced that feeling at some point or another in different ways, in different stages in our lives. So it would be, um, it, I think you and I are going to be able to share a lot of information and perhaps even mm -hmm. learn information from each other and different ways and things that we can do uh, to move past that uh, feeling of being uncomfortable in certain situations. Yeah. And you know, the irony of it is, do you remember when I, and I'm sure a lot of people were doing this in the beginning of the year or towards 2019, they're like, okay, 2020, you know, it's, they were equating it with it's 2020 is going to be a great year, the year of a new vision, you know, having 2020 vision and, um, it's going to be the best year ever, right? I mean, yes, every year we say that at the end of, you know, 2018, 2019, but this year it was even just people were making all these predictions and mm -hmm. whoa, look what happened, you know? Mm -hmm. Everything from from COVID, all lives matter, you know, just just different things. I mean, uh the political party issue and um, it's been really interesting. So I had posted something that maybe our tw our 2020 vision of what we wanted is showing up in a way that we least expected it. But the cool thing is when we're uncomfortable, stuff like this shows up. Guess what happens? It pushes us to start to take action and actually do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most people, it it takes them to do that, um, to make a change. They have to wait for something like that to happen. And then some don't do it, they run. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I wanted to kind of share with that because um, it, COVID just really changed the way we look at life and the way we do things now. And I don't know about this new normal of not shaking hands, having, you know, everybody not so close to each other. I'm a hugger. I shake hands and, and that's just not really, um, it makes me feel uncomfortable not doing any of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I look at that and, and I, I just like, I don't like that. I like, I like whole, I like touching people. Cause you know, being a chiropractor, being so hands-on, there's just, you know, if somebody just hugs you or someone, you know, when you're, you have a kid, you caress their face and they feel like, oh, everything just goes away, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's very different, but um, I always think about being uncomfortable. It's, it's a time where we are really going to change. If we don't change, um, it's because I have always noticed that the number one reason that we don't get out of our comfort zone is fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You probably think the same thing as I do. We say great minds think alike. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, now that you got into the topic of fear, I do want to share a screen and maybe we can talk about what you think it's going on uh, or what you think. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Give me one second. See if you can see my screen. Let me know. Yeah, not yet, but with when you're right, I think. Um, but what is fear? Okay, let's see. I see your screen. <laughs> so can you see oh, my screen? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this chart, I think, 
it's key and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it before. Mm -hmm. And this is how I actually explain and um, motivate patients into the growth zone in regards mm -hmm. to health. Yes. Right. So the, the red zone, the comfort zone is where we are when we're just going about our day and by day without really um, pushing ourselves beyond what we find comfortable in our lives. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so in a, in a case, for example, in a case of an overweight patient, uh, obese patient, the comfort zone is staying within the same habits of food and lack of exercise and gaining weight. Mm -hmm. But then the the reason why they don't come out of that comfort zone, even though they may be experiencing pain and, and a variety of health problems, it's because they lack the self-confidence. They think that they cannot do it. They yeah. find excuses. Well, I cannot because, you know, I can't run because my knees hurt. Mm -hmm. I can't run because I have a bad heart. Uh, and they're affected by others' opinions. What are people going to think about me? You know, people are going yeah. to laugh. The people are going to think that I'm insane. So I think those are the most common reasons. And it applies for everything, not just for overweight or obesity, but it, it applies for anything in life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I love that learning zone. That's amazing because um, the learning zone there is you deal with the challenges and the problems and it forces you to acquire new skills. And this is the perfect and this is the perfect opportunity. That's how you and I met, you know, mm -hmm. um, the learning and acquiring new skills for such a long time. I've been wanting to, and I had shared that with you. I'm like, I've been wanting to do a podcast. And and sometimes you talk yourself out of things. It's like, oh, well, there's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of this out there. And I don't know if I want to do that. We start making excuses mm -hmm. about why we don't want to do something. So, you know, that that's because we do have to learn something different. And that is uncomfortable. So, but and one thing that I think we all struggle with at some point is feeling maybe that we're not enough to to be able to have success on what we're going to do. Yes. And in the case of podcasting, for instance, I think many, many, many people will think, well, why would I even want to say something if there is people like Oprah, if there is people like yeah. Tony Robbins, if there is people like... Um, I don't know, people that are big in the industry, but the mm -hmm. reason why is because you are special and your message is different and the way that you do whatever it is that you do in life, you do it uniquely. Exactly. Yes. Oh, absolutely. We, you know, maybe they're, they have a bigger reach, but what if you have a reach that only impacts me, even if it just impacted one person and you saved that person's life and in essence, that person was a Mother Teresa type and impacted thousands and thousands and millions of life, you know, so we don't know the ripple effect. But one thing that I mean, and that's great what you're saying about the reasons why people don't want to do that is I have always been taught this back in uh, probably about my daughter now is the teenager. So I want to say probably about 14 years ago. Um, there was a doctor I, and he just kind of took me under his wing. He would do a lot of seminars and teach and um, he was just really passionate about what he did. And I always looked at him like, man, I wish I was like Billy D. I mean, he's just charismatic. You know, he would call it infotainment because it was a seminar, but he was very entertaining and he made us laugh. And I'm like, and he was goofy. And it's just like, and I was like, I can't do that. I'm like, and the first thing he told me, he um, he had told me, he says, you need to get out there and you need to do speaking. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> I said, no way. I'm not going to do that because public speaking is like the number one fear of a lot of people. Yeah, right. It is. And I mean, I went and and he, he challenged me on that. And I was like, man, I don't want to do that. Well, I did. I ended up going to, and that was very uncomfortable for me, but I did end up going to a Toastmasters um, club. And so I, I made a commitment and I started going there. And it was probably one of the best things that happened for me. Yeah, I was way out of my comfort zone, 
Um, two, as a result of that, I had speaking opportunities at churches, women's group, um, Fortune 500 companies. Um, I got picked up by a nutrition company to, you know, to go and do um, speaking on their behalf. So, uh, you know, and, and I was a paid speaker, too. So it was like, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. So it was uncomfortable. But the message had always been is like, if you're uncomfortable doing something, it's fear in you, but fear is also a sign of um, you being selfish. And I was like, whoa, that really hit home for me. It's just like you're being selfish because you don't want people to laugh at you or ridicule you or talk bad about you. And you're so worried about you. Wow. So that was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but when if you look at it that way it's like you know that kind of makes sense but if we do it's like you know you have kids and you know when we have kids or we we have loved ones it's just like why don't we do it for them mm -hmm. it it totally takes the fear out of us and the selfishness out of us and i think it helps also and it helps me certainly to define what is fear and fear is basically doing something different. That's all it means, mm -hmm. okay? So the way that I see it and the way that I explain it is we are creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. Repetition is our friend because by doing repetition, your brain says, well, you're not doing anything different today than you did yesterday. And mm -hmm. as long as you don't do anything different, you didn't die yesterday, so you're not going to die today, right? <laughs> so it's basically just us as a way of our brains and our minds to keep us safe, right? Mm -hmm. So if you perhaps wake up the next day and you say, hmm, I want to do something different today. I want to, uh, I don't know, go out for a run. Your your brain, your mind, it's going to start telling you reasons why you should not. Why? Because it's something different and you did not do it yesterday. So your brain is going to, your mind is going to start talking to you. Well, you may get into an accident. You may twist your ankle. You got to go to work. How are you going to wear your heels, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have a, a literally, you have a, a soap opera going on in your mind. And, <laughs> and then you don't do it, right? Yeah. Even if it's a good thing for you at the end. So fear doesn't necessarily mean something's bad. It just means something's different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And right. I think it's just the perspective that it's whatever we attach to it. It's kind of like nothing has meaning, a meaning to it until you attach it, a meaning to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like for a person, you say the word diet and it can be, oh, I can't eat this. Mm -hmm. Another person say diet means, oh, I get to be healthier. So nothing has an, a meaning attached to it until you attach it to it and same so. with fear just rewarding the word i'm feeling fearful i'm excited mm -hmm. or um you know i have anticipation or you know describe it in some other way a, a more powerful way don't say yes. i'm fearful or you know I'm, I'm afraid or i'm concerned but using rewarding the terminology also you know helps empower uh and and all empower you and lessen yeah. kind of that sense of fear that it's attached to the change absolutely absolutely and one of the things um i, I had written some notes down it's kind of like you know covid has has forced um a lot of people a lot of um even healthcare providers to provide health in a different manner well, like you, <laughs> I mean, I had already been doing this, the video chats, that's something that I've been doing for quite some time. Show was very familiar with that, but for a lot of practitioners, that was something new. I don't know how much of it you were doing prior to, you know, 2020, not a whole lot. You were uh, always face to face with patients. Always face -to -face. So that was something that something good was birthed out of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, the other thing is I always kind of equate it to it's like when you have a baby, it's like sometimes we have the fear of like, am I going to be a good mom? Am I going to do the right things? Am I, you know, but when we 
if we take the fear aspect out of it and look at it as more, like you said, um, even just give it a different name. Like I don't like to use the word depression or I'm depressed or I feel depressed. I, I always say I'm in a funky mood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that sounds better than I'm, I'm feeling depressed. I'm, fe I'm just in a funky mood mm -hmm. instead of like fearful, excited. I'm excited but because we don't know what's going to happen but they both can be driven fear because we don't know what's going to happen, but we could be excited. We're going on a trip and we don't know what's going to happen either. You know, so we can look at it and anticipate that actually I'm excited. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to be something good. Mm -hmm. We just change that. It's like, whoa, it just opens everything up. It's just changes it's really, the perspective. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. I think leads up to, I think, the next stage in the chart. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, go ahead and bring that on again. Um, and the other thing, and that's probably on that chart. I know I have that one, but I got to pull that out again as a reminder because I use a vibrational energy frequency um, scale with a lot of patients. So maybe at another time we can bring that up. So uh, what is that? The, the growth one, hun? Yes. Okay. So yeah, like I love all that about finding the purpose, living your dream, setting new goals and contouring uh, objectives. And that's, the, I think... That's the part where I believe you have to have um, the support with mm -hmm. finding the purpose, living the dream, setting new goals, because having a cheerleading team or even if people do laugh at you, it's like, all right, who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing matter. Yeah. You know, it's like if I did something and I'm like, oh, I'm going to call Fernanda. I just made a fool out of myself or whatever. You know, you're going to be able to tell me something. You know what? Don't worry about it. Or but look at this and you'll have a different perspective because you're like on my side and you're like my cheerleader and, and vice versa. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. And going back um, to give an example, going back on the obesity um, patient, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, once they go past making excuses, because all it is is excuses, mm -hmm. right? There's ways, yeah. and, and there is ways upon ways of exercising and getting healthier if you're overweight, no mm -hmm. matter what uh, condition you're on. So once you go past finding those excuses, then you start knowing how to deal with those challenges. So for example, if you mm -hmm. do have obesity and you do have a heart problem, so how can you exercise with a heart problem? You know, do I have to talk to a functional medicine provider? Do I have to talk to my uh, traditional medicine provider? Do I have to find, you know, a, a physical therapist or do mm -hmm. I have to find a personal trainer? Whatever it is. Um, acquiring new skills, you start learning um, about perhaps better nutrition. So you start acquiring new skills that are going to help mm -hmm. you. You start finding that you can exercise now for five or 10 minutes where mm -hmm. before maybe you were only able to tolerate one or two minutes. And then you start getting to know people perhaps that are in the same situation, yes. what you were talking about, finding that support, building a team of people that support you and have your best interest in mind, mm -hmm. people that are willing to go out and help you uh, in those situations in life right yes. when you're doubting yourself when you're you know when you're pushing yourself and and that voice is telling you you know stop doing it you're gonna hurt yourself you're not good enough you're not going to be able to do it having that friend that voice that is going to tell you keep doing keep pushing you know you you're almost there basically yeah yeah and then once you once you start growing then you see that you're achieving those goals and it's going to continue to motivate you to set up even new goals and it's going to make you feel better with that feeling of of fear because yeah. you can you can stop feeling fear as a negative situation and basically just feel fear as as just something that it's different in my agenda perhaps yes, yes for sure and you know one of the fastest ways to get from that inner circle to the outside, a really fast way to do. I tell patients that, or just anybody in anything we're trying to do in life. It's like, in, and this is for, in, you can apply this in every aspect of your life. What is the feeling that I want because I want to be here? It's like, I want a new house. 
well, why do you want that new house? You know, it's because I just want this or I want I want to have um, I want to have five rooms. You know, why do you want to have five rooms? Because I want to have people over. Why do you want to have people over? Well, I really want to have my mom. I want to have my mom come and live with me. Why do you want to come and have your mom live with you? You keep asking and asking. It's because I want to take care of her and I want to feel um, that I'm doing my job or it just it's going to make me happy. Or sometimes we're looking for a feeling and maybe it's like you want to feel like you're contributing and it's love. Mm -hmm. When you look at the end, it's like, oh, so this is what I want as a result of that. I want love. So, but we don't have to do all those steps. We can start to experience the love or the outcome. And if you start working backwards from it, it's like, it's like the shift is so mm -hmm. fast. And then you just remind yourself, see it ahead of time. And, you know, like you and I, when we had chatted up chatted about all this it's just like you know okay why do you want to do a podcast <laughs> you know there's millions of out there and and it's because i know for me i i love helping people that just that just brings me a lot of joy in my life and it just brings a lot of joy in my spirit but i always have those conversations too that i can't depend on anything outside of me whether it's i have one patient or whether i have a thousand or whether i impact one people one person or ten thousand people that i shouldn't depend on all that outside stuff to make me happy, happy. and to be joyful it's just um there is um there's one of uh, one of the mentors who talks about you know it's like you're the one that's supposed to bring the joy you know you're the catalyst mm -hmm. you're already in you you just you just get to bring it out and find, and it find out. creative ways to bring it out so um so yeah that's kind of like i find that when i get to that place of well i can start feeling like that right now what do i need to do uh, and I just I start journaling and writing. I don't know. What do you do? How do you get into that state? Because I know we think so much alike in that. What are some of the strategies that you like to use? I talk to myself. Uh, I'm and, as a crazy one. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I talk to myself every Wednesday before we come in we yeah. come online. Uh, you know, I talk to myself even if it's quietly, if I'm not able to talk to myself out loud, but if I'm able to, I'm talking to myself in the mirror out loud. Yeah. Why reminding myself the reasons why I do the things that I that I do? Why is it important? And giving myself the confidence that in fact I am enough, that I am providing value, that I'm helping others by sh by coming online and sharing this this information with you. Mm -hmm. So it's it's constant reminders towards myself yeah yeah uh, that's one thing the other thing is i invest in myself uh continuously through education uh reading you know finding more and more ways to to better myself mm -hmm. so i know that i'm providing value on what i say too right so mm -hmm. it's that imposter syndrome and once it starts setting in i, I again i have to remind myself you're doing the things that you're doing so you can provide that value. Yes. Right. Um, what else would be meditation, I think, helps tremendously. I cannot tell you, you know, and even on the days that I'm uh, maybe not focused, perhaps, or that I don't feel centered by just setting a time aside, five, 10 minutes and, and going back and focusing on myself it quiets the rest of the afternoon down a little bit. So that's huge as well. And it helps for fear because it helps recenter and refocus on what's important. So you go back to the basis, right? Like you were talking about, why is it that, I, that I'm doing the things that I'm doing? If it's because I want to feel love, I have to look inward and find that love. Yeah. And then sometimes fear is driven from past failures and we don't, and we revisit and we keep rerunning that neural track in our brain that, well, the last time you tried this, you really screwed up, you know, and, and that we've run that so much. And it's kind of like, even like, 
I don't watch the news. I don't watch the news. I've been going to the gym and I'm like, oh, I don't want to see this, you know, because I've been like protecting my eyes and ears. I don't want to see this. And um, because it, it, it takes you back to like situations. I'm like, no, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to go there. So I, I talk to myself and say, okay, I, I'm going to um, uncreate, delete, destroy that across all time, dimension, space, reality. I say all these, I have these sayings that, you know, about that, or I know that God's got my back. I know that things are always working out for me. So I, I have that constant monologue <laughs> to mm -hmm. going, you know or the inner dialogue so when i think about the commercials that what are the commercials i'm playing in my head mm -hmm. because if you keep playing those same commercials you're going to be stuck in that same story and i'm not sure if i have shared this the, the last time i'm sure i probably have in one of the conversations that we've had is that anytime we speak something out loud we give more power to it by 10 times but anytime we speak it if it's negative it's seven times 10 so it's 70 times more powerful mm -hmm. so that's like whoa that's like oh that's huge so it's like so why would you want to say anything negative so it's not even about hey you just want just be Mr. Positive. Well, you don't necessarily have to be Mr. Positive. Just don't be Mr. Negative. <laughs> That's just like a huge thing, you know, just by not doing anything negative. Just see things as neutral because that's what they are. Again, yeah. like you said, nothing has meaning except what the meaning that we attach to it. So mm -hmm. anything that happens in life that we think it's good, it's it's literally based on our past experience and everything mm -hmm. that we think it's negative is based on our past experience. So think about how limited, literally how limited we're seeing life. You know, we're seeing life through a through a focus, through a lens, literally based on our past experience, mm -hmm. nothing else. And that's what we based on making any type of decision on anything new that that we encounter in our lives yeah you know is it good is it bad it's really nothing mm -hmm. except what we think it is yeah for sure so i'm gonna um uh finish up with a couple takeaways that we can give you know people that they can work with you know two 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 takeaways you know one if we're uncomfortable doing something it's because of fear Fear is usually driven. Um, fear can sometimes be selfish because it's it keeping us where we are and it's not letting us go outside to grow as an individual. And as we grow and we get more tools, it adds more responsibility for us. And each one of us has God given talents and gifts that only we can deliver in a specific way. And if we stay in that fear circle, um, it's like you're ripping everybody else off around you. Yes. So going back, so number one would be um, if it's fear driven, look at what is it that you're it's it's almost like you're being selfish. So choose to do it out of love, you know, choose something to do it out of love, whether it's your kids, whether, you know, I, I, my mom is like my driver. You know, I mean, just the depth of love that I have for her um, and, and my husband, it's just like they're like my drivers. So, and then a number two that I think is really important, if you can get these two down, number two is to have a group of people, or it could be one or two people that are going to support you. And they're going to be your biggest cheerleader and like, you know what? All right, Fernanda. So it didn't work out that way. It didn't work out the way you had planned, but what did you learn from it? You did it anyways, right? So I think those two are really are just are two things that I think we can apply in any aspect in life because nobody sees all my failures, all the things that didn't go right. They just get to see, hey, well, you know, things those things are working for you. Yeah, but you haven't seen all the other 99 stuff that didn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those are kind of my two takeaways before we finish off here. And you? My two takeaways, the first one would be take action. We are so concerned many times in finding excuses to never start until we're fully ready. I don't know fully ready for what, that we <laughs> literally talk ourselves out of taking action. And this has killed more dreams than I don't know what, the inaction, the having to have everything perfect in order for you to start exercising. It's like, literally, if you wanna go for a run, it doesn't really matter what shoes you're wearing. Yeah. 
You know, you don't have to have $120 shoes in order for you to go to to a run. You don't have to have like the Nike shorts. So just take action. Go for a walk today. Go for a walk right now. So starting today, starting right now, taking action. That would be my number one thing. Mm -hmm. And then the number two thing that I would say is invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't do that because we're so busy giving off to other people. If we have kids, we buy for our kids, we buy for everybody else, but we seldom, a lot of people feel uncomfortable spending in ourselves, right? So spend money, invest time, effort, and anything in yourself, anything that it's going to make you grow, anything that it's going to, to be of a positive effect or result mm -hmm. for you and for you to accomplish your dreams, invest in it you're worth it so just do it take action and invest in yourself those are my two absolutely i agree so well those are four good points that people could start you um start with and uh, i'm sure that this added some value to them and just excited to hear you know hopefully we'll hear from them and just say hey i i did what you said and this would happen so we would love to hear that from, would be from them yeah yes. so that would be awesome. well you enjoy the rest of your time in beautiful arizona which is going to be your home here pretty soon so i'm excited and um, um it'll be great when we actually can do a, a, a podcast together, together so that'll be a lot of fun so i know we, we have a lot of exciting things planned in the future so Absolutely. I'm, I'm thrilled about that. So, all right. So we'll see everyone next week and pretty sure we're going to be having a guest join us next week. We'll let y'all know all about that next week. That's exciting. Thank you, everybody. Okay, see ya. Bye.